Alright guys, so in the last video we were successfully able to log in the user, register the user as well as get the user profile with the user token. So now in this video we are going to start working on a front end and currently my Mongo daemon server is also running as well as Mongo client shell is also running and currently we have one user in our database and to create with the back end uh, front end we'll simply we are going to use view.js with vuex so let's go and quickly create that thing so first of all we are going to create view uh, currently i'm in my client server directory which we created root directory so i'm going to create a file that is called uh, that is i'm going to create v project over here so for that and before that make sure you have view installed that is npm g npm i dash g at the rate view cli but i currently have installed if i say view dash dash version and here you'll find what i have currently installed version 3.5 in my system so to create a view project we'll simply say view create and we'll call it client and this will take your wizard of questions so i'm gonna click on manually select the features i'll be using router so to choose anything we have to simply press the space bar i also want to use vuex and that's fine and everything is fine nothing plenty of formatter you're fine and for history mode yeah definitely why not with the error prevention mode linting on save and in packet.json and if you want to choose want to save this thing for later you can save it but not now and this will install a couple of dependencies for a view project so i'm quickly gonna pause this video and i'll be back after once it is done so my view.js has currently done with creating the project and now if I ls in the current directory we'll see a folder named client and I have already opened it vs code and here is a client directory so with the basic stuff it has in our source folder we have app.view which is a main app component which will be rendered out then we have a store file which contains our vuex states and then we have some views and to run this I, in the previous video i have already installed something called concurrently so now we are gonna use this concurrently over here in order to run client side as well as front end a back end as well as front end with the same script so firstly i'm gonna get rid of this test script and i'll simply say client install and this will install and pm install and this prefix client so this command is gonna install all the dependencies for the client if you are in the github repository we have uploaded this thing then we are we are going to use start and this time for a start script i'm gonna use node app.js because this will be helping us in running our application when we'll deploy it on heroku or something else then we have server that is node mon app.js which will run our app and client we are simply specifying all the stuff and for this npm run sir does does prefix client so this command will go in our client directory and make sure this packet.json is in the root directory not in the client okay so next command which will be like run dev script and this will be npm run sir uh, not run sir this will be con 
this will be the same thing just concurrently uh, not good with the spellings concurrently with the forward slash and after that npm run server and with a forward slash then ending slash then again a forward slash with a space npm run client and that would do it so now with this command we are going if we are some if we write something called npm run dev and there's nothing that is yeah double quotes actually it should be double quotes over there yeah so now we'll see our app development app is started and started building also a client view which is our front end so currently now we are gonna see this url over here so currently my app is running view app is running and i'm quickly gonna clear this terminal and if i open a new window over here that is localhost a port 80 80 and right here we have our view application running so next thing is I'm gonna quickly close this directory and I'm gonna go for the quick cleanup so currently I don't want any kind of styling so I'm gonna get rid of this thing and I also don't want this router links so I'm quickly gonna go get bootstrap.com and quickly gonna copy these links in order to provide some styling to my application that's fine yeah I don't know why it's showing some error we'll see it later I'm gonna go to this public index.html file and I'm gonna paste this script style tag and then I'm gonna bring in jQuery and proper.js which is bootstrap dependency paste it over here and save it and now if I reload this page we'll see everything bootstrapped away so this is my view app um, and our s components directory i'm gonna get rid of this hello world component let me see whether anywhere it is used or not and here it is used so i'm gonna get rid of mostly everything let's quick clean up and i'm gonna save nothing in there everything is fine and this is about page whatever you feel like and you can delete this move to trash i don't want that so first component which i'm gonna build is navbar.view and that navbar.view will be nothing but the navigation bar and you can go to this documentation and the navbar just to save time copy this out and you can write template or oh, not template scaffold if you have the extension installed properly you can write this command scaffold and everything should work fine and yeah that's all so this is our navigation bar then I'm gonna go to this app.view and to bring a navigation bar in this application we need to bring in that nav bar so import nav bar from and components nav bar 
and since it is a view file so we don't have to mention extension and now we have to register that component in components object so we are have map bar and just to comment this out for a while yeah to use that nav bar we can simply write this and now if I save go to my client we have our nav bar over here so currently nothing is working now we are gonna fix everything from piece by piece so in my nav bar I don't want it to be light I want it to be dark and now if I save we have a dark navigation bar over here and now instead of this a tag I want something called router link so I'm quickly gonna copy this part and go to nav bar paste it over here and give it a class Maven auth now if I save everything is over here if I click everything works well okay so now I just don't want this form element hanging over here now this button is gone now I want all the links to go that way so for that we are simply gonna change this MR auto to ML auto and now if I say we have all the links on the left hand side so now uh, I don't want this drop down menu so I will get rid of this thing even the disabled one I don't want anything So now for this home button, I just want to give, give the same thing. Oh, not. Uh, I want this router link. Um, if you don't need these stuff, you can go to other channels also. You're free to go with other channels also, where you can see all the basic stuffs. This is not for the beginners video. So, and now if I save and here I have my home and this home button is quite up there and looking quite awkward because we haven't provided it a class nav link now home button looks perfect then I want to create another route that will go to about so I'm gonna quickly copy this out paste it and get rid of the spam tag about and this will go to about page now if I save we have about if I click about this is an about page this is a home page so next thing is I just want a couple of other links too so I'm gonna quickly you can do the same way in Mac we can simply say alt shift and down button and I don't know about windows so first one is login then register and profile and um, I think that's fine for now no one more that will be logout button so first one is login register profile out and this won't be a router link this will be a tag yeah that's fine log out profile register
login and if I save we have all the links over here but currently these links won't work because we haven't created the routes for these links so in order to do that we need to go to this file uh, this router here JS file and this is loading lazy loading so we don't need that we need not to worry about anything and I want all other components to be loaded very lazily so one for login register profile and that's I guess that's all for now command D command D login and the component which we want to load is login then this one is register register and then one is profile profile.view and now if I save we have this error and that is because we haven't we haven't created these three components so in my views folder I'm gonna create these components and first component is login.oil second component is register.view third component is profile.view so we have all components ready over here so you can write scaffold and everything will be there with a div and h1 dot text say h2 first one is login I save everything should find scaffold div h2 and if you don't know about this thing that is simply your Emmet and if I save everything is fine scaffold div h2 profile I'm going literally fast I know about page login page and login is not working let me quickly see why it isn't working so for that I have to go to this inspect page and fail to mount render function login app view okay so in my router login dot view is there register is not defined okay let me clear this out and run it again I think there's some issue with the service and that's all oh yeah everything is working now and that was button so don't worry about that so all pages are right baked together piece by piece so router is started working now so here we have compile this thing and here and one more thing I wanna say const router equal to this and export default router and everything should just work fine I'll tell you why later so if I have this navbar every file is working well so let me quickly get 
over take a overview of this thing we have created all four three routes one will be protected later on one is login profile register and app.view we have brought in the nav bar and this router outlet will go in with a container class so now if I save everything is kind of stretched in the middle now in every page so whatever is behind here is in the container now and that's basically it for now so next thing is now we are gonna create a form in this login file so now to create a file uh, to form we are going to use the bootstrap classes so for now that is let's say i'll give a row then with a card of max mx auto and which will center the car then card header header with a card text white with bg primary and this is the text and if i write login Now if I save on my login page, we'll see something like this. And that looks really ugly. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this card width of 60 percent of the screen and that looks far better so now under this we'll be having a form and before this we need a card the class of body and where we are going to have a form and for now we get on this action dot form we want to dip with a class of form group over here and then in there we want something label and that label will be for the username input for the class of form control text placeholder username name will be username and the model username so with that I think everything is there and one more thing that is ID and that will be again username so everything is written over here now radius zero because I don't like models and median and this time control everything is fine now if I see we should see this most nice looking form over here so everything is fine with that and later on one more thing I do, I do want to again form group and that form group and don't worry about that error that is basically 
saying that we do we have that username password and we have everything over here and now if I reload that there is no more over here so now we want something called label for password Since it is a mass text placeholder, password name to password, ID equal to password, and we model also equal to password. Now, if I save, and here it is, everything in there. Now if I save, we have a nice looking password over here. Then the next one is, I want to create a button with a class of btn, btn primary, and which will say login. And I'm gonna give four times n, b, s, p, come on c, come on v, on me four times then I want to give a e or router link which will take two register class B card link um, which put need an account now if I save we look this perfect everything looks fine so what I'm gonna do quickly gonna copy this form and go to register not this form whole row I'm gonna copy this and go to register instead of this login we are register we have username I'm gonna duplicate that thing next one is our command D command D command D command D name field name and model is fine placeholder should be name now if i save and go to register we have name field over here and don't worry about this error just now i'm gonna i will fix it in a moment and later on we want to have one email field and that email email so we have username name email and we need one more pa confirm password field confirm password Now if I save and this is not confirm password field, this will be only password. And now say so if I save everything looks perfect. And instead of this login, this will be register. 
already have an account. Account and the should go to login. And now if I save, everything looks perfect. So now what I'm gonna do gonna create the data attribute of this component or view specifically saying we have username which is equal to empty string password equal to empty string confirm password which is again equal to empty string name field which is empty Email field which is again empty so we have all five fields over here and with five tips and make sure now no errors are there so everything looks perfect so now once that is done we are now going to implement something called view X so to implement the view X we need something called modules and if I go to this store.js file which is already included in our application with the store because we are bringing that store from here. So now I'm going to create a folder area and that is called, that is called warehouse. And in this warehouse it will contain all the modules in there. Whatever the modules we, are, we want to use in here. So let's say we want to use authentication module so I have created this authentication module over here and now I'm gonna go and do this authentication module and do something so first one is import axios from axios since we are going to use the axios very well so we will be using Axios so we have brought in the Axios and later on we need to define some other constants so first one will be constate equal to this and it serves as a warehouse for us to work with and we need to bring in something called router also so import router from one up and we have over here router so first one is state then we need const getters just similar to this um, store which we have created which we got the default over here then we need something called const actions which has these values in there And const mutations so here we have whatever we need for our route for us to warehouse like this will do all the actions like uh, like all the actions whatever we want to do with the data and this will change the state of the uh, this warehouse so at last we need to export all these so export default and which will be state actions not this mutations and we need to also export getters so once everything is exported from here now in order to use that thing in our main store we need to bring in that thing so to use that thing in our we'll simply write import auth from a warehouse slash auth and instead of this state variable we'll simply say something called modules And in this we need to register that module so if we say control s 
and everything should work fine not, no, with no errors in there and can't resolve axios yeah just because we haven't installed axios so far so uh make sure you are in if i ls currently i'm in my root directory make sure you need to go into the client folder so cd c-l-i-e-n-t client and npm install axios i'm quickly gonna pause this video and once it is installed i'm so Axios installed and now every uh, the, now this app is working very well fine no with no issues and I don't know why yeah so for the login everything looks perfect but not this one and that is just because uh, I thought uh, the same code piece of code will work for this but this is not working so I need to fix it just by going to this login script and gonna quickly copy this out and gonna paste in this style tag of this template and save it and everything just looks now for like yeah so once that is done now we need to go to this auth.js and before doing anything we need to go to this main app the main js file so now if I just go to this main app the JS file we need to do some stuff so first of is import axios from axios and now we need to do some stuff like pause token the token from the local storage and this is doing in order to make our axios call so we are just setting its default authorization headers to this token so if in case any token is present we'll load that token on the initialization of the app so we can simply write const token equal to local storage dot get item and I'm, I'm gonna store that token with the name of token and before that view dot prototype dot holder http and we are setting axios as a default prototype for the view and now if there is any token then we will simply default axios authorization headers so if token is there we'll simply view dot prototype dot dollar http dot defaults and I think I'll prototype yeah everything is fine yeah default errors dot common authorization equal to token and everything should work fine and yes it is so we are doing we are just loading the token from the back uh, from the local storage with this token value and we are just if there's any token we are just setting the token to this HTTP default header or to the Axios object which will be sending back and forth API 
my calls and that's basically it about this now we don't need to touch this again so now if I close so now the states state is a vast topic and we need to think out as is like we need we are doing some state work so first state is like for the authentication firstly we need a token and that token we will get from local storage dot get item again from there and that will be token or if in case it will be empty if it is not found so this is our basic state if the user is logged in that means the token will be available in the local storage and that will be fetched and if not found then the default then the token will be set to empty strings then we have user user which will store our user data and status which is empty string again so this is a basic initial state of the application where the users are on this now here we want to get us so it's locked in and this is a state this will take a state parameter and if state the token this is basically a shorthand thing to write and otherwise you'll say is logged in equal to function function something like this and which will take in the state if the state is state dot token not equal to empty string return true else return false something like this this is same thing but I'm gonna comment this thing out and instead I'll be using shorthand thing then odd state will be state again and this will be state dot status then next one will be user and this will again take state and send back state.user and this state is nothing but this whole state so whatever the things we have in there we are just sending back so now let's quickly check how we can use that and that we can check in our navbar component so to check that in the navbar component firstly we need to bring in something called import map getters from view x because we have installed that view x and there's a call computed map getters and in order to access that property now we want to bring in this is logged in or not so how we will bring it over there now if we go to our application currently we can see logout also we can see profile also we can see register but we want to lock this profile and logout for the unauthenticated users and we want to we want to hide these two routes for this authenticated users so how we are gonna do that so if you want to access this property we will simply copy this stuff from here and paste it in the array and now that is logged in property is can be used in used as a computer property for this component so let's see in the action this about and home component are fine but i don't want to view this thing so we can simply use the if directive is logged in is not true 
and in this case that is correct that is not true and this will be only for the logged in status so once that thing is true we will be able to see this state now if I save and if I reload we no longer see this uh, profile page or the login page uh, profile or logout button over here so this is the way how we can use these the states all right everything is fine okay so now if I close and go back to my auth actions so firstly what I'm gonna go to with my login and we don't need to see work with this uh, main uh, store.js file again for this application and since we have this form created over here and on the click on the submit of this form I want to do something so let's say firstly we need to prevent default so for that we can simply write at click and we want to prevent the default action login user we want to call this method and um, we are gonna use method method and here login user and now to and for now if I say console.log this dot username this dot password and if I save and if anyone and if anyone to three something and we can see all the state over here for reload I'm going and we can see all the thing from here so what I'm gonna do over here we want to create uh, we can call that call our API over here and send the request and you can store but think about this way like doing for every component like this and in this way our data is limited to only a component and which is very difficult to share and so to that to handle that thing view x comes in action so firstly I'm gonna create and then I'm gonna explain you how it's gonna work so login action so async login and this will take commit I'll tell you what is commit in a moment then user and if I save everything works fine commit auth request then let response is equal to await because now we are gonna call an API and we have to wait for the response from the server so we will be using in that case await and that's why this function is called and now we are gonna post that data from there for now local post HTTP five thousand users slash uh, not users API slash users slash login I guess yeah and if press the data not success since we are sending success from our backend over here once the user is logged in success becomes true now we are gonna use that success over here so 
for the success the data we want to save that token equal to res the data dot token const user equal to res dot data dot user since we are sending the user also from there if I go to my API oh I'm not sending the user so user user okay fine makes sense we are sending the user also from there and that user is nothing but this user which we got over here so I'm gonna get that token set the token store the token into the local storage and how we gonna do that local storage dot set item with a token key I'm gonna save that token uh, once now set the axios defaults and axios dot defaults dot headers dot common authorization equals to token now we are comment auth success with the token and the user and once everything is done we are gonna return the response back to the component so now how we are gonna use this function in our login component so that is the question so let user data since in our auth component it is accepting this user and this commit is nothing but the mutations whatever we will be handling over here so this commit is this mutation so let user username is equal to the start username password the start password and once everything is done firstly we want to bring in that method so for that import map actions since it is an action from view x we have brought in that action and now we want to add that action to the methods of the components so map actions and this is login and rest of the actions will go beyond this now what we are gonna do that is a question how we can send that thing since this login has been brought in from the auth actions now we can use that login method as direct this dot login and we can pass in the user data which we have sent in over here then whatever the response we were sending back we can use it over here too if res dot data dot success equal to true this dot router router dot push and we're gonna bring it to profile page and in case of any error we're gonna simply console that log error so let's quickly see this in action so now and one more thing yeah mutation type auth request is not available okay so I forgot to add the mutation whatever we were telling about these mutations 
so auth request first mutation and that auth request will take the state and state dot status since it is mutating the state in loading it will set it to the loading state then auth success is also there and in case of auth success we are passing a data over here so first argument will be the state and then second argument will be the token which we is which is over here and the third argument is the user and now there's the state dot token equal to token state and that is state dot oh sorry what I'm doing state dot user equal to this user object which we have sent over here and forgive me this won't be the commas this is simple function state dot status equal to success so now if I save everything should work fine so let's quickly see this in action so I have created this thing and my username was one two three four five six seven eight nine zero if I log in log in with the request and here it the name is not found everything is working well so let me quickly see my username and it is Mandy Mandy now if I log in we still not able to log in and now if I log in network oh my god that is a really a bad reputation which I've built. Oh my god. And that is just because type. Submit prevent. Okay. it is again again logging it yeah the thing is I instead of this click it will be submit event so now if I save everything should work fine and same in the register component not yet I put it with a click event and that shouldn't be the case so now if I put Nandy Mandy one one two three and login and the username is not found and if I put one over here login again and the username is again not found so the username is that the Mandy come on we and send that is there's something wrong with the API I guess so if I go to this users username is not found okay uh, that's why i was thinking the username is not found by so that's basically because v model is somewhat not bound properly username does not use a name i pass this user object password and this is password v model yeah everything is fine id name placeholder go 
console dot log user oh my god <laughs> instead of this login I need to pass in the user object oh my goodness now if I log in one two three four five six seven eight nine zero a login username is not found that's fine if I put one and we are pushed back to the profile page and we are getting a response with a token and everything is working fine and we can also see our profile as well as logout buttons so that's basically it and in the next video we'll start with the registration and route protection thank you guys